I realize I left most of you hanging on yet another cliffhanger at the end of my last video, but before heading into the final chapter of this series in my reimagined version of the Ori region, in my conceptual third game for fan-favorite spin-offs, Pokemon Coliseum and Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, with a brand new story and cast of characters within an expanded version of the Ori region, with even more Shadow Pokemon, including mutated Shadow Warp Pokemon based on the Seven Deadly Sins. Although this video will be taking a little break from the story, as I thought I'd share with you my full Ori Pokedex for the conceptual game Pokemon XD Descent of Darkness, and offer a little insight into why I picked some of the Pokemon I did for the region, each location, or character's Pokemon team. Now, since the majority of the Pokemon in the first game had to be a Shadow Pokemon snagged from other trainers' teams, I didn't really pay much attention to the Pokemon found in the two previous installments, as trainers can come from anywhere, so just because they have a Pokemon doesn't make it native to the region. But I did pay attention to the Pokemon found in the Poke Spots found within Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, as those could be caught in the wild naturally. But there were only a handful of those. And since Pokemon Coliseum and Gale of Darkness were confined to Pokemon from generations 1 through 3 as they came out in the third generation, obviously we have a lot more Pokemon to choose from, many of which I felt would fit right at home in the Arizona-inspired Ori region, and I even included my own Fakemon from my three Fakemon regions, the Luika region, the Firin region, and even my upcoming Zoni region. So without further ado, let's take a look at the full Ori Pokedex, starting with the Ori Region starter Pokemon, Eevee. With the two evolutions you start with in this game being my own evolutions, the Ghost-type Mummion and Dragon-type Drekion, both playing vital roles in the story as they assist the hero Zion on their adventures to snag the mutated Shadow Warp Pokemon as well as the flying-type evolution for my third Fakemon region, the Zoni region, snagged by Zion later on in the story, but originally belonging to Namid's father, Chatham, as it was once his starter Pokemon, before flying off to the Zoni region. And of course, if you have Eevee, you have to include the Pokemon mascot, Pikachu, and its evolutionary line. Although, it's important to note that its three Fakemon evolutions I gave it for each of my Fakemon regions would not be obtainable or present in this game, despite Mummion, Drekion, and Avion being present, as your starter Pokemon would be Mummion and Drekion only because they were prepared by Neo Team Cypher to assist the Shadow Slayer and Avion as it's only available by snagging it as it flew in from the Zoni region to visit its previous trainer and is infected by the Shadow Virus. Next are some Pokemon that can be found all throughout the Aura region, many of which would be considered the early game or Route 1 mons of most Pokemon generations. Let's start with the early game normal types. While there would be a handful of these from various regions found throughout the Aura region, the most common would be the Zigzagoon and the Patrat line. The Zigzagoon line, as the Aura region has always been Gen 3 coded as it came out in that generation, and because raccoons are found throughout Arizona, in its forests, deserts, and even in its settlements raiding trash cans. Whereas I felt the Pat Rat line fit, as Unova being based in the United States would presumably be close to the Aura region, so I actually included a lot of Gen 5 Pokemon for this reason, as well as the fact that Unova had a lot of desert as Pokemon for its large desert area, so most of them fit anyways. And I felt this line particularly fit really well, as it resembles the prairie dogs found all throughout Arizona. Since raccoons are primarily nocturnal, I felt the Zigzagoon line would be found more commonly at night, while the Pat Rat line would be easily spotted during the daytime. As for the regional birds, I felt both the Starly and Hoot Hoot line fit the bill. See what I did there? The Starly line as it's inspired by the Starling bird found throughout Arizona, and I feel like this line would be found all over the Aura region as well, and the Hoot Hoot line as Arizona is home to various owl species, many of which capable of living in various climates and biomes, so naturally this line would be found all over as well, appearing more often at the nighttime, while the Starly line would appear more often during the daytime. 
Now for the regional bug, I felt the Wormpool line, being another Gen 3 representative, would work best, as it offered a variety with its two evolutions, with the Beautifly line being found during the daytime, and the Duststox line being found later on in the evening and night. Speaking of nighttime, another bug type found all throughout the Order region, but exclusively at night, would be the Chirping Cricketot line. I also felt the Ore Beetle line fit the Ore region perfectly, as Arizona is home to various beetle species, not to mention the line alludes to aliens, which Arizona and the West in general are heavily associated with, so this line would be found all over, typically orbiting around the region's deserts and forests. Speaking of aliens, the first explorable area in Pokemon XD, Descent of Darkness, would be the Cosmic Crater, the crash site of the meteorite carrying the dark contagion that organically creates Shadow Pokemon in this game, inspired by a massive meteorite site in Arizona called Meteor Crater. Here you'd not only find the Orbital line, but other Cosmic-esque Pokemon, such as the Elgem and Clefairy lines, as well as Minior and Lunatone and Solrock. This crater is also where you'll have your first battle against Shadow Deoxys in its original form for the tutorial of the game. While we are here, I'd also like to explore more of the desert areas surrounding the Cosmic Crater, as the arid Ori region is primarily made up of desert, and that's what comes to most people's minds when they think of the Ori region are these games. Now, I obviously added a couple other biomes and locations to the region for some variety, but I also expanded upon the desert area, making it into two parts. The first being the lower half, which is the bulk of what was already featured in the previous games, housing iconic areas such as Ori Coliseum, the Outskirts Stand, Fennec City, Railgam Tower, Pyrite Town, the SS Libra, Snagum Hideout, and Cypher Lab. Here you'd find a variety of desert-inspired Pokemon such as the Santru line, inspired by the Armadillo found down south of Arizona by the border, as well as the Cacnea line, as Arizona is not only full of cactus, but has several famous cactus gardens as well. The Nummel line and the Flygon line all previously found in the Aura region for good reason, as well as newcomers from newer generations such as the Score Rupee line, the Mandibuzz line, my original Hourglass Fakemon Sand Duo, with its pessimist and optimist form, the Silicobra line, Orthworm and its new evolution I gave it, tunneling around in the desert sands, dune style, as well as the Lucario line, as is the ace Pokemon of one of the main characters from the first game, Rui, as I decided to give her a Pokemon companion in this game, and I felt Lucario was the perfect Pokemon because of its connection to Aura, because Rui is able to read the Aura of people in Pokemon. So I felt that was fitting, and her, Ryolu, and Lucario even have a special appearance, wearing tutus. But don't let the pink fool you, they are just as tough as their trainer. The Oasis Pokespot would also return, but there would be more than one Oasis in this vast desert now, all of which housing unique Pokemon such as the Skirskit line, Fanfi line, Hop Hip line, as all of these were found in the Oasis spot in Gale Darkness. But plenty of other mods would be found here as well, now such as Maractus, the Merrill line, and of course the Lotad line, as it would have to be in the Ori region for Mirror B to have so many loot colo. And if you're lucky, you may even spot the Dratini line in an oasis. I also added a new area to this portion of the desert called the Excavation Site, where you team up with a new character and archaeologist, Rex, to round up and snag some fossil Pokemon as they are revived by the Shadow Virus, including my own fossil Pokemon from the Luika region. To the bottom half, there's also Pyrite Town and Pyrite Cave from the first games based on mining shafts, so I tried to incorporate Pokemon that I felt fit the mining setting, like the Charcoal line or my Miner-inspired Oddlure line from the Luika region, as the final stage of this line, Trezor, is one of the first Shadow Pokemon you battle in Descent of Darkness within the mining shaft. I also took inspiration from animals found in caves and the cave focus spot within Pokemon Gale of Darkness as well. Next, we have the upper half of the Ori Desert, which I added to feature even more of its massive canyons and rock structures Arizona is known for. A lot of the same Pokemon found in the lower half of the desert would still be found here as well, with some new additions such as the Ekans line, inspired by Arizona's Taurus Rattlesnakes, the Bramblin line, inspired by Tumbleweed, the Trusty Mudsdale line, the Lycanroc line, the Geodude line, the Onyx line, Skarmory, the Pseudowoodo line, the Helioptile line, and since it is Arizona, other reptile lines like the Scraggy line, the Cyclozar line, 
and the Garchomp line, as well as a couple bugs like the Dweeble line and the Low Kicks line, including the new evolution I made for the line, Lokomech, as I felt it really fit the more futuristic, high-tech vibe of the region, being based on Kamen Rider's Mecha and the Kawadi and Cowboy inspired Gauchiro line from my upcoming Zony region used by Neo Team Cypher member Cowboy Boon. This is also where you'd have a high speed battle and race against Shadow Deoxys in its speed form, rushing through the desert around its various obstacles such as its canyons and cacti. I added a new location in the form of western inspired ghost town to this area as well known as Isola Town. A lot of rare ghost type Pokemon can also only be found in this area at nighttime, such as the Sinistee line and the Litwick line. And while not exclusive to this area, you can also find the Duskull line throughout the desert areas of the Ori region at nighttime. The Drifloon line can also be found all throughout the Ori region, especially at night, inspired by the hot air balloons and festivals, which are very popular in the Midwest, as well as the Limbu line and my Kamara and Dreamin. Sleep Demon inspired line, both of which created for the Firin region. And you'd even have a spooky showdown here against Shadow Gengar in the streets of this ghost town beneath the full moon. In the upper half of the desert, there's even a canyon gorge called Horsey Canyon, inspired by Horseshoe Canyon, with plenty of water type Pokemon to capture, as well as the Revolt Dam, inspired by Arizona's famous reservoirs and dams, such as the Theodore Roosevelt and Glen Canyon dams with even more water type Pokemon to capture. It is even the spot where you'd battle Shadow Milotic, who makes use of the deep reservoir water. Next would be more of the Pokemon found primarily in or around the more populated areas of the Ori region, roaming the streets of its towns and cities, such as the Skitty Line lurking in alleyways, alongside the Trubbish Line, or Rattata and Radcat scurrying out of the sewers or trash. You can even possibly see a Munchlax dumpster diving, or stealing food from a street vendor, or even the occasional Snorlax blocking traffic. The Poochiana and Nicket Lines, while found in the wilderness, could also be found here scavenging for food. The Snubble Line and the Machamp Line could be found in the streets picking fights with you or each other. The Abra Line could be found almost anywhere in the region, including in its cities, where it would teleport all around, You'd also have the Revavroom line, zooming through the streets. So it goes without saying the streets of the Aura region's towns and cities would feel alive, and its wild Pokemon wouldn't be restricted to the wilderness. They say the grass is always greener on the other side, and in this case, it is true. So let's explore some of the more lush areas on the other side of the map. Starting with the peaceful Agot Forest from the first two games filled with a variety of Pokemon of various different types. I thought fit this area or forest in general, but I did, however, look to some real forests or parks in Arizona for inspiration, trying to take the wild I found there into account. But this peaceful forest is not so peaceful as you have to stop a rampaging Shadow Slacking from destroying Agot Village. In the grasslands or prairie areas of the region, You'll find a variety of Pokemon of all different types, but mostly of the bug and grass type as a lot of them are inspired by Arizona insects or flowers. Including the Vestplug and Sproutlet lines I created for the Fearn region, which have a symbiotic relationship sharing an electric charge instead of pollen, as one is a plug and the other is an outlet, as I felt their more high-tech appearances fit the future aesthetic of the Ori region. In the neighboring farmlands, you'd find plenty of farm animal Pokemon, as Arizona is a big farming community, of course, and this is where you'd battle Shadow Hatterin at sunset in a spooky corn maze. Here you'd also find a Quinny village based on Native American reservations, as there's a lot of those within Arizona, as it has a lot of deep history with Native American heritage. And I feel like the Ori games really didn't reference or play into that at all. So I thought I would. So here you'd find a lot of Native American inspired Pokemon, such as the Zatu line, the Bravery line, and even my Spy Dream and Nightmarak line from the Luika region as they're based on dream catchers, as well as an African spider species, and Anansi from African Folklore, who is um, associated with dreams, which is why I did the whole dream catcher thing, even though those aren't typically found in Africa, even though they do actually have their own dream catchers, but I digress. And outside of the dream catcher concept, there are plenty of spider species within Arizona, so it fits perfectly, I felt. And in the new Mega Metropolis I added to the region right above Aquenny Village, known as Neo Aquenny. And since the Aura region is known to have a future aesthetic in its locations and character designs, you'd even find plenty of lines like the Porygon line, the Magnemite line, the Voltorb line, and the Clink line in many of its more advanced cities. 
as well as my own fake Mon duo from the Fearin region, Combot and Medroid. With Combot patrolling the streets alongside Officer Jenny, and Medroid usually seen assisting Nurse Joy in Pokemon centers. Gale of Darkness hero Michael, who returns in this game, even uses a Combot throughout the story. This is also where you'd face off against Shadow Deoxys in its attack form as it's chasing you through the labs and to the rooftop of Totem Tower. To the northwest of the region, I added a snowy mountain, so I could include more ice types organically. Here you'll find Snowbello Slopes, which is a ski resort, inspired by many of the ski resorts found in Arizona, most of which of course using artificial snow, but regardless, you'd find plenty of ice type Pokemon here within this area, as well as a couple of my fake Mon lines. Including a counterpart for Absol I created known as Retri, the yin to its yang, both of which being used by antagonist Twyla in double battles. And you'd even team up with Grusha from the Paldea region to take down Shadow Mamoswine as it's endangering those trying to enjoy the slopes. I also added a beach town and resort next to Gatteon Fort known as Celebe City. Along the beach you'd find the Executor line, the Sandy Ghast line, the Krabby line, the Wingle line, and the Clam Pearl line. You'd also find its evolutions in the water or ocean waves alongside plenty of other water type Pokemon like the Sharpedo line circling the shores, Schools of Love Disc, Magikarp, or even the occasional Gyarados or Lapras. As well as the Jalescent line as I felt it fit the Ori region's more tag centric battles. And from Gadion Port, you'd take a cargo boat filled with Cypher Goons to Citadark Isle, but out at sea you'd be caught in a rough sea storm, where Shadow Deoxys in its defense form will come crashing down, and you'd have a battle on this sinking ship against it. And after arriving on Citadark Isle, you'll find plenty of ruthless Dark-type Pokémon on the hunt along its barren beach, as well as Fire-type Pokémon around the island's volcano. And on this volcano, and in the cipher lab found here, you'd battle a Berserk Shadow Cookatrix, which is once again a shadow version of one of my own fake mon, Cookatrix from the Fearin region, which can also be found on the volcano as well. 